Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 27th, the first Sunday after Thanksgiving, the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, it's a pretty nice day so far here in southeastern Pennsylvania, although there's some rain coming. Uh, but that's okay. In the 50s, pleasant fall day right now. Uh, pleasant fall morning, I should say. I've got my olive wood pipe from my good buddy Carl, olive wood piper. Uh, loaded up with Pegasus this morning and about to enjoy that and uh, embark on a discussion of things that you, you probably didn't expect me to ever talk about but <laughs> very non pipe related it's uh, there's gonna be a woodworking heavy discussion but actually gonna talk a bit about community as well so I've been having troubles um, with my woodworking. Life is fine, woodworking not so much. So I mentioned before, and I've got some pictures that I'll show you off and on through this, but uh, I mentioned before that I've been rebuilding this, uh, what's called a kraut cutter for my in-laws. I, I hoped to have this finished by Thanksgiving and technically did. On the right there, you see the original kraut cutter, and this is just laying on a table saw. Uh, the blade assembly has been removed from the original. And on the left, you see the new version of it that I've done in Sherry. And, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good replication there, and I've moved the blade assembly over. Uh, I don't have the blade set or sharpened yet, but they're cleaned up, and everything's looking good. So the next step, it turns out, is that there's a box that runs... In, you might have noticed there's little channels. Here, I'll put it back up. There's there's some channels that run uh, above the surface of the, the, the cutter there. And those channels will hold uh, some little wings that come out of a box. And that box is going to allow you to slide it back and forth across the cutter. And then there's a press that pushes down on the cabbage that's in that box and you you know go back and forth. It, it's sort of a safety feature, I suppose. They don't, I believe, use the box, but when I talked to my wife about this, she said, oh, it'd be nice to have the box. So, so I'm gonna make a little box. And you know, that, I thought this was gonna be the most trivial part of this whole project. Uh, I've lost the ability to cut dovetails. So, First off, the original boxes, from what I can gather, I don't have one, but I've seen pictures of them. Uh, they were just screwed together, uh, screws into end grain, which is how the the darn cutter itself was held together. So I've improved on that design. Uh, I don't want to make another screws into end grain box for this thing, even though that would be historically accurate. I just can't do that. Uh, so I thought, well, how am I going to make a little, well, I'm going to dovetail it. That's the most obvious way to do those kinds of corner joints uh, when you've got two end grain surfaces coming together in, in a 90 degree joint. You know, dovetails work really well. And I've cut dovetails before, and I'm not the world's greatest dovetail master, but I get by, or I had gotten by. But that was a long time ago. Um, you know, I, I uh, haven't done much woodworking in the past Ooh, seven years now. And prior to that, I was really not doing any hand tool woodworking. I was building a piece of furniture for um, you know, a large TV stand sort of thing with drawers in it and all that. And it was a lot of router work and table saw work and things like that. There wasn't a lot. Of, it was it was plywood, uh, you know, plywood with strips of real cherry around the, the, the top and, and the edges and then the drawers were made out of out of ply with real cherry faces so there was some uh hand work but it was mostly machine work and that's fine you know there's nothing wrong with doing that but it's not what i enjoy it's what i do to get a job done sometimes but i enjoy the hand work so i was looking forward to cutting these dovetails so i have not cut them in probably 12 to 15 years something like that so it's been a long time couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I kept trying. Now, for, oh, what am I doing? 
For those of you that do not know what a dovetail is, um, this is a dovetail. This is a random dovetail that I just pulled off uh, the internet. And it's upside, it's hanging upside down. It's defying gravity, but that's just because the picture was inverted. Uh, but you can see it's it's a, it's a fairly simple joint. You cut into the end of, of each board. Uh, one board gets what are called tails. The other board gets what are called pins. And uh, those slide together and, and interlock very nicely and make a very strong joint. So I've been trying to do this to make the little box. And uh, this is a picture of yesterday's tails and pins that have been cut off of boards because I make them and they don't look right. They're just not, they're just not good. They're not, they're loose or they're, they've got big gaps in them or they're, you know, too tight and I pare them down and then they're too loose or they've got big gaps in them. So that's just the mistakes that I've made. And I think I've narrowed down the problem as of late last night. I have decided that the problem is actually in this picture. And as you can see here, I've actually gone to making just one dovetail. Just one. <laughs> if I can get one to fit right, I'll be happy. Honestly, this is this is probably the 20th uh, and 21st iteration of this this nightmare that I'm going through. I've decided that the problem is actually that saw. That is a beautiful Lai Nielsen uh, saw that my wife bought for me for Christmas years ago. Um, and I really haven't used it much and I'm trying to use it now. It's not the saw that I had used previously and I just, I don't think there's anything wrong with the saw. I just don't think I've yet gotten the knack of it and I've got to work on that. So that's the current, uh, concern or at least my current theory is that it's it's the saw and it just cuts differently it's it's more aggressive than what i've used in the past it uh it's very comfortable and it seems easy to get to hold in a way where i can be pretty certain i'm sawing plumb but uh yeah it's uh, so i got work to do why am i telling you this well this has led me to watch a lot of dovetail videos on YouTube. You know, for the past, I noticed that I started this on Wednesday, I think was the first time I tried to cut the dovetail. So it's, this has been going for quite a while. Um, so, I, I, you know, I do this until I'm tired and then I watch YouTube videos on hand cutting dovetails. And there's a lot of YouTube videos on hand cutting dovetails. There's some very good YouTube videos on it. There's some abysmal, just unwatchable YouTube videos. And I've watched woodworking videos in the past. You know, there's a couple of woodworkers that I follow and watch quite routinely. And I'm not going to name anybody because I'm going to I'm going to say some bad things too here. So I don't want to name any of these these folks. Plus, you're probably not interested. There's We'll get to why I'm talking about this, I promise. There are some channels that are just, you know, you you watch these guys. If you've got any experience, you watch these guys and you say, well, they got they got a great video set up. They're really flashy. They've, they've got the personality to do this video. Every thumbnail, you know, the, the bumper at the start of the, the, it's them like pointing to something they've done. You know, their face is prominent in every thumbnail. Um, but their technique is awful. You know, they're just hacking away. They're they're putting together things that are that are sloppy. Uh, it it's just and and there are, so there's that and then there's some people where the personality is just such a big part. They're doing good work, but it's all about them and it's all about what they're selling or what they're promoting. And and it, I can't watch them. You know, there there are, there are a few woodworkers that are you know quite frankly are good good woodworkers and and could I could learn a lot from but I just find them to be absolutely unwatchable I, I feel ill watching them uh, because I know they've sold out a part of their soul so I'm watching all these videos and it got me thinking about something that I I remembered happening and I had read a while back um, 
there's a guy named uh, Christopher Schwartz who uh, runs a company. He was formerly the editor of, I think it was Popular Woodworking, Fine Woodworking, one of the big woodworking magazines. Uh, he left that job to found uh, Lost Art Press, which is a fantastic company, and I highly recommend you go visit Lost Art Press. I will put a link below to uh, the blog post that I'm going to be talking about, as well as their um, their primary site. That they have brought back you know, the whole idea of lost art. They're bringing back um, publications that have been out of press for a very long time that explain or help us better appreciate hand tool woodworking. Uh, they're bringing back some tools that have not been available for, for a while or in versions that are superior to what is currently available. And they're very good at promoting other folks too. They, you know, they see a tool that they think is the right tool for a task and not so much the best tool for the task, but the one that will get the job done and the one that uh, is... I want to say historically accurate, but that's not what I really mean. Because again, it's about this lost art. What's appropriate for the for the art, if you will? Um, they'll point to that and say, you know, this is the one you should get. No, they they have no, they get nothing out of that. So I like Christopher Schwartz. I like Lost Art Press, and Christopher Schwartz uh, is a pretty competent woodworker. And when he teaches something, you can be pretty confident you're getting you're you're hearing the right stuff from him. Uh, he's not one of these guys that's going to have his face in every uh, every thumbnail. So he put out this thing. Uh, I don't actually remember when this was. It might have been years ago. And I might have it here. Yeah, this okay, it was, it was last year. It was October 2021. And it was about um, what he called wiener woodworking. And he's referring to these guys that are that are you know more about personality than than skill and so on, and it's this list. And I'm not going to read all of them because I don't want to steal his list here. But there's 20 items on the list, and it's you might be a wiener woodworker if. And again, I'll link to this post below so you can go read it yourself. And it's things like I'm just going to read four or five of them. You call yourself a master woodworker without the documentation. Um, you name simple jigs and processes after yourself. <laughs> and, you know, if, if you're in the this world at all, you relish every chance to talk about the difference between art and craft. You have more t-shirts in your web store than furniture pieces. You own more beard wax than beeswax. And the other one, which I'm not finding here, uh, yo, you have more tattoos than router bits. <laughs> so what Schwartz is doing here is he's taking a shot at these guys that are uh, all about them and nothing about woodworking. And this caused a bit of, you know, a kerfuffle. Uh, and I'm not in that community so I don't really know I just heard it discussed on a couple of podcasts and things like that so it was interesting it was interesting and you know it did lead to some anger I guess for lack of a better word but you watch these things and, and you watch these videos and yeah these guys are you know I'm gonna show you how to, to how to restore an old hand plane and they're using you know wire wheel uh, brush on it very aggressive wire wheel brush they're spray painting it they're, you know they're... okay if that's what you want to do fine but don't make a video telling other people to do it because most people would cringe at that um, and there's lots of other things lots of other things why am I talking about this well I got to thinking about it and it's a real problem in, in that part of YouTube, in the woodworking part of YouTube, because you can't sort out what's right and what's wrong. Uh, as I'm looking for these dovetail videos, I'm finding, and because I, I know these, I don't know them, but I know their videos, I've watched enough of them. When I see this particular person holding up a dovetail joint, I don't watch that video. But other people will. 
And if they watch it, they might think that they need to buy that thing that that, that person's pushing. Um, you know, another video might be, you know, how to cut perfect, accurate, hand cut dovetails. And, and there's the picture of the guy holding a saw and there's no picture of a dovetail. And you go and you, you watch the video and you realize this guy really isn't doing a very good job of it. And there's no close up of the joints afterwards and so on. So there's a lot of stuff like that that you got to kind of sort out. So there are wiener woodworkers and there are um, good solid woodworkers. And the difference is the wieners are about them. They're about their personality. They're about their themselves, not the work that they're doing. I look at us, I look at the YouTube pipe community and I realize just because it's natural to do the comparison, the contrast, we don't have those problems because we by, by definition, our, our YouTube channels are almost always about us. You know, we're talking about us. We're talking about our lives, what happened, what our favorite pipe is, what our favorite tobacco is, how we like to pack a pipe, how we like to, to light a pipe, things like that. We're very rarely saying, you got to do it this way. And this is, this is the way pipes are smoked. And I know this because I'm a pipe smoking expert that's been smoking pipes for us. We don't operate that way. And those that do, Excuse me. Those that do don't last very long because we can smell a phony a mile away, you know. They might get their cult following, and that's fine. And and you know, they, they last for a while. They come and they go. They they have trouble sustaining it because the fact is there's not a lot about pipes and pipe tobacco and that you can be an expert on. This is pretty simple stuff. <laughs> so if you're not there because you want to be you, if you're not there because you want to, you know, if you're there because you're trying to sell yourself, sell something, you know, um, it just ain't right. It's not going to work in this, in this community. So we don't have that. We are ourselves. We, we're not selling ourselves. And that's, that's a wonderful thing. And I think it's part of, you know, I've, I've, I watch a lot of uh, woodworking, machine shop, fly fishing, fly tying. And again, I'm not in those communities, but I watch a lot of it. And I can tell you, they don't have this kind of thing. You're not going to see one of those guys sit down on a Sunday morning and talk about other YouTube, other types of YouTube channels. It's just not going to happen. They're going to talk about either the exact thing that their channel is focused on, you know, how to cut a dovetail joint, how to, how to saw a straight line, you know, those kind of things, or they're going to talk about the products, you know, the things they're selling. You don't get this. And that's a shame because I think that's one of the truly wonderful things about what we do. And I'm still trying to light the lighter that I know doesn't work. So maybe I don't have to light it. We've got our, our, our groups, you know, there's the, the codger type folks, there's the, uh, I don't have a name for them, but the anti-codgers, I called them once, you know, the guys that smoke one pipe a week and they want their tobacco to be just perfect and they're willing to look for that unicorn blend and they want the high-end factory pipes or the handmade artisan pipes and that's it, they won't touch a corn cob. Or you got the codgers that, you know, just the stuff it and puff it kind of guys that don't care that much about the external stuff, they just want to have the pipe um, and they get along because we're not saying the way to do it is to buy this pipe if your pipe costs less than this it's no good we're not saying if you don't smoke this tobacco you're we're saying we're, we're, we're pipe smokers and we're getting together because we're friends it's wonderful we're very very fortunate Go out and look around the YouTube world. Look at the other communities that are out there. They don't even call themselves communities because they ain't. Be proud of what we got. Be thankful of what we've got. And if you see it going awry, don't be afraid to say, hey, that's not what we're about. We've got our ups and downs. We've got our moments. But 
we stick together. Guys, I have no idea how long I've been talking because I don't have the computer in front of me. It's over there. Um, I'm actually looking at my workbench right now as I talk to you. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this. It was a little bit different, but uh, everything's a little bit different. I'm going to finish this up and get back to cutting dovetails. Actually, just cutting straight lines until I get this saw figured out. Have a great week, folks. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.